let's just get this thing going. I think we're uh, we're pretty much ready to rock and roll. We can uh, we can share our screen, get the uh, the presentation going, and um, you know get this uh, show on the road as they as they say. Um, today's topic is mastering sales in commercial finance, right? And how you can blend sales and marketing to ultimately lead to success, right? What is success? Success is ultimately getting deals funded when you're talking about commercial finance, right? Um, so that's what our, our goal is here is to get deals funded, ultimately, um, you know, look to get business owners the right style of financing um, and really just leverage our relationships to, to help business owners uh, grow and and ultimately take advantage of, uh, of the opportunities that they're coming across. So um, I think we're uh, we're all good. If you guys don't mind, let me know that you can uh, see the screen in the chat and we'll uh, we'll get this. Uh, we'll get this thing rocking and rolling. You guys can all see this thing. Yeah, all good. All right, perfect. Looking good. Looking nice. good. Looking even better now when we got some headshots, right? There we um, go. So I'm Tony Semino, the VP of, of uh, Business Development here at Rock Financial. And my role is to help with lead generation, right? Um, make sure that the company has, has leads to work on. Um, to my left, and probably your right on the camera, um, is Steven Rodriguez. Steve is our Director of Commercial Finance. Between the two of us, we have over 30 years of, of experience in the lending industry. Um, and it really does just give us a, a good understanding of what works and what doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> right that's uh, for sure a lot right. of appetite lot of, yeah a lot of experience like appetite. That's a lot of for sure. experience and in that um you know a lot of a lot of lessons learned so excited to share some of that stuff with you guys today many um, lessons yeah we're gonna many, waste many lessons we're gonna waste no time so that we can start to share some of these things right we're gonna jump right into things uh and just start getting after it and, and telling you a little bit about um some of the ways that we do business, right? Because if you're going to master sales and commercial finance, one of the easiest ways to do that is follow the path that has already been blazed, right? Um, I I don't know how familiar you guys are with Long Island, but you can uh, you can drive on the beach on Long Island. And what they tell you is stay in the rut, right? So if there's a, a path already there, ride that path, right? So if you want to be successful in commercial finance, go find others that are successful in commercial finance. And I like to think we got that going on right here. So some of our lessons that we've learned or some of the things that we wanted to, to kind of teach you guys, it starts out as what do prospects actually buy? Right. And what is the motivating factors behind somebody actually buying? And is it some slick talking, you know, uh, a good sales type of person, right, where they're fast talking and, and using big words? Absolutely not. That's people don't buy because they were sold. Right. What we what we've learned is that people buy solutions to their pain. Right. So what is pain? Well, pain is something that is preventing them from growing or taking advantage of an opportunity. Um, so it really could just be a wide, wide range of pain, right? But when we're talking right. about commercial finance, right, specific to small business owners, there's a couple pain points here. But, you know, at the end of the day, there's a laundry list of reasons why, why a small business owner might look for financing, right? And um, the the very basis of it is so that they can separate the personal and the business, right? Um, and I think that that's probably one of the base layers that we should start to talk about is, hey, when you talk about mastering sales and commercial finance, you got to really stay focused there, right? Because a lot of these um, gurus and people that teach you about lending, um, some of the things that they're teaching have personal guarantees and personal, oh, yeah. uh, you know, personal loans and, and personal credit lines. Yeah, that stuff's great if you can't qualify for, for traditional business products, but there's very few business owners that have established businesses that aren't able to qualify in today's market, right? Um, the, 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 qualifications have been pulled way back, right? As, as we've added technology into the industry, you really can look to solve a, a ton of different challenges, right? Um, Steve, as far as like commercial real estate goes specifically, right? Just to, to kind of go down into the weeds for a second. Sure. As far as commercial real estate specific lending goes, what are some of the pain points there that that you would say you're able to help solve by by 
offering commercial finance, you know, commercial lending to uh, to a small business owner? Yeah, yeah, no, that's a, that's a really, really great question to lead off with, Tony. So when we look at commercial real estate financing transactions, can you move a little closer? Absolutely. Is that? Yeah, 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 yeah. get up on that thing. There you All go. right. So when we, when we look at commercial real estate financing transactions, one of the one of the main details that you'll find with most borrowers when they're opening up the dialogue is everybody's looking for the best rate and the best program, right? The best product, cheapest rate, best pricing, lowest payment. I want 4% if it's available, <laughs> right? The thing that people don't realize as they start to head down that path of pursuing best case pricing, which is going to be, and this is just an example, one yep. of many examples, right? Yep. When we start talking about conventional financing and HUD financing and CMBS financing, typically we are going to carry a personal guarantee along with those. And there's going to be some really heavy restrictive covenants of maintaining those loans. What do you mean? So maintaining, so if it's a, a conventional bank level loan, they're going to want the full relationship. That is a guaranteed requirement now nowadays. They're going to want, the bank is going to want, if not the full relationship, when I say the relationship, I mean the banking accounts, the operating accounts for that business and for, sure. for that holding entity that operate that property. So if our borrower is not interested in moving over their relationship, really that, that's a product that's really not going to be available. And then going forward, with that, they'll want minimum balances. They may have restrictive covenants saying you can't drop under a certain balance. You have to maintain a certain minimum balance always in those accounts. And that's going to be based on your industry, based on your historical data, right? Like that's not. Right. That's and just, it, not it, just, it just varies from bank to bank. Too. Yeah, they all have different rules and guidelines. Exactly. So, it's not a. It's not a one size fits all. There's no. There's no answer to the question there. That's one thing that I want to point out is like it's going to be very customized to that scenario. Why? Because that bank is going to lend money at, at, at very cheap rates. Yeah. Right. So if they're going to do that, they, they have to protect their, you know, their risk. That's right. right. Um, and how are they doing that? They're doing that with the things that Steve's telling you about, where you have to switch over all your banking accounts. You have to hold a, a minimum balance in those accounts. You have to put certain guarantees in place and blanket liens in place. And that's just to get access to, to better pricing. Right. I mean, and and we're not even talking about the underwriting. Process. Yeah, yeah, you, know, yeah. you, you show up with a tax return, personal tax return that has multiple entities on it. They're going to underwrite each and every one of those entities, not just look at the property itself that we're the subject property of the subject business that's in the property that we're working with for sure and and when you want something like that it, it comes at a premium right? right and the premium ends up being the the rate right um it, it could even be the term right it, it it ends up being in the structure of the deal that's right to, you know so that there's there's definitely a lot a lot of layers to the pain points that we're able to solve right we're we're literally specifically just scratching the surface on one product here on one portion portion of how that product can work. We're really just talking about the very, very top tier. Um, you know, there's going to be countless of opportunities for us to, to continue to insert some of this stuff. But I want to try to keep some high level information in front of you guys as we really get down into the weeds, right? So when we talk about, um, you know, uh, the pain, right? How do you identify the pain? You identify the pain by asking great questions. Great salespeople ask great questions. And it's their ability to change how they're saying, not necessarily what they're saying, to the, meet that needs of that borrower or that that specific prospect and allow that prospect to to put down their guard and start to answer some of those questions. And then the answers to those questions are exactly how we establish what the next step is for our borrowers, right? Because if Steve starts asking a borrower, are you comfortable with a, a personal guarantee? Are you comfortable with moving over all of your banking uh, you know, relationship? Well, if they say no to that stuff, well, now we're starting to pivot in the products that we're able to offer them. And that's probably the most important lesson in today's whole webinar. I'm going to it, throw one more at you. Yeah. One more that's so such an easily overlooked question is what's your timeline? Yeah. Right. If we're working with a HUD product, specifically talking about commercial real estate, um, uh, if we're looking at a HUD product, if we're looking at an ABL facility, an asset based, true asset based revolving facility, these are products that can take two to four months to close. If we come in, you know, in our timeline, we have a we have a purchase scenario with a an expiration date that's 45 days out, yeah. you know. Conventional and HUD is not going to be an option. 
Then we're in private, the private lending territory. And, you know, we're talking about the, the covenants start to reduce. Of course, there's a premium, as Tody noted, on pricing. The rate starts to go up. But what's most important, losing the down payment on the contract or trying to secure, trying to close the deal in 60 days and 90 days, that's really going to take 120 to secure the best possible pricing. And, and that's the pain, right? That's the pain. That's what we're talking about is, hey, we don't have that timeline, right? So that's why you have to ask these great questions. We have a list of questions that we're going to get to for you guys, just so you know. We're going to go into the questions specifically that we use to help us qualify borrowers for different products, right? Because there's, there's we once learned from, from a, a, a old song that there's levels to this, right? Uh, and there's, there's certainly going to be different ways that you can go about it, right? But what you're able to offer to business owners is going to be based on your ability to get them to be comfortable answering your questions and giving you the information and ultimately buying from you, right? So today's lessons are really all around the sales and how we're going about that stuff, right? So here's these qualifying questions. Right. When did you start the business? Right. Not only that, did you show a profit in last year? Right. If it's been around for longer than a year, is it a profitable business? Right. These these you could bounce back and forth. You could ask them in a row. Um, they're numbered for for the uh, for the aesthetic. But there's no re rhyme or reason as to where these these questions are. My favorite question that's not necessarily even on here is like, you know, so tell me a little bit about the business. How did you Absolutely. get started? Absolutely. How did you get started? Every business owner wants to talk about how they started their business. The origin story. Yeah, yeah. It's like they, they'll never stop talking no, about it. No, it's like their baby. They want to talk that's about right. when the baby was born, right? I, I could tell you all about my two kids and them being born. It's the same thing. Um, so if you start there with the origin story, like Steve mentioned, it, it it allows the conversation to go in a natural way, right? Well, now I know when you started the business. You just kind of told me the origin story. And if they're telling you and they're not giving you a specific specifics. Well, do me a favor. Can you be specific? When did you get started? Right. And if you insert something like that along the way, it keeps the conversation feeling natural. You get your information. Now you start to take these notes and it starts to shape where you're able to take the process. Right. Um, the best salespeople set the best expectations. Right. And, and the way that you set great expectations is getting the answers to your questions so you can predict what's going to come next. I'm not saying that I that we can predict the future here, but we certainly know that when it's a no. Right. Um, so we try to give that to business owners quickly, because if it's a no for three products, but it's a yes for three others, we want to know which one of the yeses makes the most sense. Right. And that's when we start to ask some of these other questions that you might feel are a little bit more specific. Right. Something like, hey, are, are you in the B2B or B2C industry? Are you currently offering terms? If you're offering terms, how much is your current outstanding AR? Um, you know, these are specific to uh, uh, accounts receivable financing. Right. And, and potentially factoring style of products. Right. So now we're getting down into the weeds. We're starting to get into the nitty gritty where we are shaping what we're able to offer this business owner based on what their business is essentially going to qualify for. Right. And that's where the, the information is lacking on their end. So that's what they're waiting for you to tell them. It's all about how do you leverage this information going forward. Right. And ultimately understanding that sales is a funnel. Right. Once somebody's inside, it's about continuing to get them to go down the funnel. This is a major step, though. You being able to qualify your prospects is going to be a huge step in mastering the sales and commercial finance. Anything that you want to kind of add in here as far as some of the questions go? Me? Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, sure. I, I would just say I'm going to I'm just going to add one quick note and I'll, I'll, I'll cover that as well. But just. With, with Tony saying here, you know, asking questions to figure out what the scenario is, right? To figure out what the borrower's needs are and to figure out how their business operates so we can figure out the best product to meet their goals. Think of yourself as the doctor, right? A good doctor, hopefully. You're trying to diagnose the issue. You are at. You go to the doctor, you say you have an issue, you're not sure exactly what it is. What's the first thing the doctor's going to do? They're going to do an examination. Wow. They're going to ask questions. So you're the doctor. One other point, getting to your nose quicker. Another, another analogy to the medical industry. This is called triage, right? On the battlefield, nurses and doctors have to make decisions quickly as to who can be saved, right? 
Same thing here. You're the doctor. Don't waste your time on a borrower that you cannot help. Yeah. If you spot that it's a no, let it go early. All right, save yourself the time. That's why I call it triage. Move on to the next. Yeah, for sure. And I'm so glad that you use the the medical uh, analogy because I even have a, a, a specific one to sales, right? Um, the sales malpractice is prescription before diagnosis, diagnosis, right? So what does that mean? That means that you haven't had a chance to see what the actual issue is and you're already prescribing what's gonna come next. Mm-hmm. That's that's being novice in sales. You really utilize what you're learning to establish what's gonna come next. Um, there is a little Easter egg in there that we threw in so that you guys could see that the uh, the questions were even in there. When we send this out, we'll make sure that it's got the uh, the the right amount of questions, but no, there is no there is no need for a superpower for uh, for uh, question number nine. They don't need a they don't need a superpower. Um, so definitely uh, appreciate you guys um, keeping attention here. It seems like we got some questions rolling in. One thing I didn't mention is if you do have questions, please 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 put them inside the Q and A because Steve and I will go into the Q and A and start to read the questions um, from top to bottom in there. So please dump your questions into the Q and A. I see some things in the chat that might be great questions for the end. Um, so definitely make sure that you guys are, are sharing that stuff there, right? Um, what do the questions lead to? The questions lead to the products, right? So what are the products that we offer? Well, I always say that we're we're really like a conduit, right? We're a connector. We help business owners get to the right lender with the right product, right? And that's that's the advantage of working with Rock Financial is we've figured out what's the path of least resistance between those two things. And how we've done that is with these products that are here in front of you. There's some inferences or some assumptions, right? I, I don't love the, the term assumption, right? Why? Uh, I'll let you guys think about why we don't like to assume. Uh, but as far as some inferences or things that we can we can assume about some of these products is like, well, if we're going to offer equipment financing, it's probably going to be to finance equipment, right? So if somebody's going to need an invoice for their equipment, or they're going to have to have a specific piece of equipment in mind, right? You can't just as a uh, as a, a a business owner say, "Hey, I need equipment," and not know what type of equipment you need, right? Um, I think about when I was working for the landscaping company uh, that I worked for, we were using the same backpack blowers and the same uh, weed whackers and the same lawn mowers, right? Like we had like a line of stuff. Like there wasn't like one of one type, one of another that, no, it was like, hey, we have five of these and eight of those and, you know, 10 of these. And, you know, even even the buckets of grass, like the buckets that they use, they were all the same type of bucket, right? Like, all of that stuff becomes the same. Why? Because then they're able to keep track of it. They're able to understand what potential cost would be to replace it and ultimately needing to finance it in the future. So this is, again, getting into the weeds specific to equipment finance, but we could really do this across any product, right? If you're talking about a line of credit and and we're talking about like an unsecured line of credit, well, you don't want to take a line of credit and, and have this line of credit where, hey, I'm going to draw on it today and, and pay it back over the next 18 or 24 months. It's going to end up costing you a lot more money than potentially some of these other products could. So really understanding, hey, is the cost making sense? Is the use of funds making sense? And and really using all of that to narrow this thing down, right? Um, like Steve was starting to explain before with even just inside of commercial real estate is there's certain timeline barriers, right? there's timeline barriers with equipment financing it it really depends on all of the factors right and that's where i think a lot of salespeople forget is hey i'm you know i got this box checked i got this box checked they start counting their commission and they're starting to to already go in a in a specific direction whereas great salespeople they take the time to ask all the questions understand the full playing board and, and and move forward from there um you know, as far as like the products specifically, Steve, it's really more about the mix, right? Like being able to to kind of stick and move, as I always call it, you Definitely. know, um, you know, so as far as like being able to stick and move, tell me about that, right? Like you started to touch on it a little bit with the commonalities between commercial real estate and asset based lending. But give me a little bit more of that. What do you what do you mean? Like, how can you how can you potentially use some of these products in, in lieu of some of the others? Right, right. So what, what I think about whenever we when, when we have a borrower that comes to us that doesn't know exactly what their needs are, that can they have 
a clean slate, let's say. They're, they're, they have no debt. That's a perfect scenario. No existing debt, right? Yeah. Nothing, no UCCs, no lines of credit, nothing, right? Blank slate. The, really, I want to understand the way that business operates and how they produce their revenue. Do they have assets? Do they, do they produce revenue based on AR? Um, do they have inventory? Are they you, you know, produ- getting their orders via purchase orders from their, their customers? Why is that, right? And obviously, in addition to understanding what their, their goals and objectives are. So I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. And, th- and by the way, this is important because it helps us figure out what we call the capital stack, the debt capital stack. Think of ourselves as advisors, right? We want to think of ourselves as advisors. We're providing debt advisory services. And part of that is understanding, like I said, how to best structure the capital stack so that we can best meet their needs and not you know, tie them up so that they can't get future funding for, for other objectives down the line. Speaking with a borrower today, uh, a home builder uh, out in California, and he is he's growing very quickly, a year in business, strong credit, really strong revenue production, profitable full year 2023 under his belt. And just about a year and a half in, in business now. January of 23 was when they started. He a blank slate, no debt, no existing debt. All of what he does when he's building these homes, he's doing it as a contractor, as a licensed contractor working with other contractors. So he has contracts with those contractors and they're paying them as they go on a performance basis. So that that becomes a receivable, right? As he's issuing billing and invoicing as, as he goes through uh, these progressions on completing those jobs, yeah, completing he's, stages, yeah. he's issuing invoices to those contractors that he works with, right? Sure. And they're paying them as he goes through. We can leverage that, that, that's a receivable, right? We can leverage it either on the purchase order side, the contract side, or on the receivable side. The, he's been speaking with several different consultants over the last couple of weeks, and he's getting offers, all kinds of offers for SBA loans, which for this borrower, it makes absolutely no sense. Reason being, if we give him in a, put him in an SBA loan, they're going to UCC1 him, and that's it. He's tied up. If he wants what to- What does get, that mean? So UCC1, it's like, it's like, a UCC is like the title report for, for the business, right? And by real estate, there's a title, right? So- when a lender comes in and ent- enters a first position lien on that UCC, that UCC filing, that's a lien against all general assets for that business. Okay, They're so what you're saying position. is, what you're saying is, is it's not just based on the one home that he's building; it's based on everything, everything that that business is going to own. Every dollar that he produces, every piece of equipment that he owns, every receivable that comes in, it's then going to guarantee the loan that he takes because Correct. of the SBA guarantee. That's essentially the collateral. Gotcha. Got right? it. Okay. So then why is it more beneficial to have this, this style of like AR or contract style of, of underwriting? Why does that make sense? Great question. So we would assume, right, he's a year and a half in business. He's grown over his first year and a half. He's doing well. He's con- He expects to continue to increase growth. If he wants additional funding to support the additional costs for the for his growth, for the new jobs that he's taking on, an SBA loan at let's say 250,000 or 500,000 even, that's a term loan, right? So he takes that today and then he pays down and until it's paid off, that's gonna hold first position and it's gonna prevent us from coming in with AR financing behind it. If we so start can't get the other, stack, you can't get other financing because they're- Unless you take that loan out. Gotcha. Which may not be advantageous, right? No. With an AR facility or a PO facility, that facility can grow as the receivables and as the new contracts are coming on mid-year. We don't have to wait for a new set of year-end financials. If the receivables are there, he's going to be able to secure the financing for it, which right. allows him to take on more and more jobs as he as he continues. That's awesome. So that's one specific scenario why you could leverage just the receivables and potentially doing it on an individual basis for Correct. each of the receivables That's right. versus, hey, we're going to just come in and kind of throw a blanket over everything. And yeah, the terms might be favorable, but is the outcome necessarily favorable? And that's that's where not all products are created equal, right? Definitely. Depending on how you ask your questions, the answers that you get, where they're trying to go, it's really, really going to determine what you're going to get access to. So as far as, again, now... You got the the overall view. Now, what's the baseline? 
right? That's that's what comes next, right? What are we selling, right? Where can I give the barriers of entry? What is it going to take to qualify for some of this stuff? Definitely. It's pretty simple across the board, right? If you generate revenue into a business checking account, you've done it for the last three to six months, um, you can get access to funding. That's, that's the lowest barrier of entry that there is, right? Um, as far as how you get access to, to multiple types of financing or some of the, the top tier or, or um, some of the more traditional styles of financing, that's going to be based on the individual borrower, right? That's going to be based on all the other factors. But the number one factor that it's going to come down to is affordability. Steve and I have done a few of these, oh, yeah. uh, a few of these things together, and it really always boils down to: can the the does the borrower have the ability to afford the note? Right? If the borrower is the business owner and it's a you know it, it's a, uh, a line of credit, it's going to be based on their ability to have flexibility within their bank account. Right? What do I mean by that? I mean that they keep a decent amount of money on hand at all times. Right. Because that's what a line of credit does is it gives you flexibility. Right. Well, if they're going to give you flexibility, that means that they want you to they want to understand that you can handle that flexibility. So by you being able to keep a decent amount of money in your account, it shows that you can afford a payment. It shows that it doesn't really matter what your balance is on that account. You're going to be able to make it right. Um, and then again, now we're getting specific. We're getting back into like what is one product qualify for. Right. We want to kind of try to paint the board here, right? Um, we want to try to give you guys some high level stuff. So as far as like industries go, healthcare is great. Steve was just talking about construction, um, restaurants, transportation, auto repair is a great industry. Uh, retail shops are a great industry. Uh, E-commerce has become a decent, uh, a pretty good industry, honestly, depending on what they're doing and, and how they hold their inventory. There's a lot of opportunity there. Um, so it, it really is going to depend on the individual, right? Yeah. Do they have the the minimum criteria? And then it's okay. Let's ask some good questions and we'll determine what what's next, you know? Um, and, and that's, that's what I think is most advantageous is, Hey, once you have them and you know that they meet the minimum, well, that's great. Now it's just about kind of showing them what's next. Um, and, and how do you do that? Right? Well, they kind of set themselves up for it. And how do you do that? It's using the answers to those questions, right? When you start to ask great questions, you're going to get answers, right? And they're going to tell you things like, well, I'm having a cash flow issue. Well, tell me more about that. What do you mean you're having a cash flow issue? Well, I have this opportunity where I'm looking to scale and add more, uh, you know, build more homes in California. However, because I'm waiting on getting paid by these different contractors, the same opportunity Steve was just talking about, I'm not able to finance uh, additional opportunity. I'm not able to go and take on additional projects, right? So what do we do? We come out and we send an email or we post on social media, or we run ads behind, hey, are you having cash flow issues where you're not able to take advantage of newer projects because of slow paying accounts receivable, right? And now when somebody engages with that message, we know where to start the, the conversation oh, yeah. as salespeople. Definitely. Right. And this is where sales and marketing meet. When you're effective in your marketing and you understand what pain points your buyers are buying from, you can then go put those pain points directly in your marketing. The people that engage with those pain points, you know where to kind of then place them. And listen, there's always going to be the, the, the game of buyers are liars, right? They're going to not tell you necessarily the truth on the upfront, right? So you still got to do your due diligence. Okay. You still have to ask your questions. You still have to go through the whole sales process. But what this does is it makes sales and marketing meet. It makes them work together. And ultimately, as a salesperson, it will increase your conversion. That's really what it comes down to. When you teach referral partners about how to generate specific opportunity for specific things, they're going to be able to help you do that. When you teach social media how to generate specific opportunity for specific things, it, it's going to help you out. It, it really is blending that sales and marketing approach, right? Where now that the questions that I ask are becoming the problems that I solve are becoming the, the opportunities that I market, right? And all of those things start to work together hand in hand. Um, you know, as far as how this works, we believe in a hybrid approach. Yeah. We use it all. 
right? Like if you were to ask, well, what does Rock do? Where does Rock put the focus? I mean, you know where. We're on a, a webinar with over 200 people that are potential and existing referral partners. You know where we put the focus. It's you know on the, us. Yeah, <laughs> it's on the referral partners. It's on the, the four emails you probably got from us today, right? Uh, it's on the social media posts that went live. It's on the, the SMS campaign or text campaign that hit your email, your, you know, your text uh, your, your inbox, right? We're, we're everywhere, baby. That's what we do. We're everywhere. <laughs> we're all over. <laughs> yep. Um, but that doesn't mean that, that you can't find something that works for you, right? Uh, you can't find something that, that, uh, you know, is your niche, right? Um, start where you, you know, you know, you can find some success for us. It, it's people, you know, that's, that's why we started with referral and kind of, kind of built on that. But, um, you know, our, your ability to take advantage of some of this stuff is really going to come down to you, honestly. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think about some of the notes that Tony was just talking about, like asking questions and, and starting to notice patterns is what he's kind of starting to hint at, right? Like yeah. a retail business, a manufacturing business, you know, retail businesses, for the most part, they have similar issues, right? If the, the, the our borrowers in retail, right, where do they have problems? They have problems with inventory, moving inventory, securing financing for more inventory, right? If it's a manufacturer, they have issues with purchase order financing, securing the, the materials and supplies needed to meet purchase yeah, supply orders. Chain. So exactly. So now we're, we're speaking to a new manufacturer, there's a good chance that they're going to have a supply chain financing issue. And the questions become, you know, very similar from manufacturer to manufacturer. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's, that's just, and, it, and just taking that one step further, thinking about marketing, Right. You, this opens the door. If you become strong in one of these areas, one, you know, strong, let's say, in inventory financing, strong in purchase order financing, strong in equipment, strong in SBA. Now you can start to target pain points in your marketing that are concentrated on those specific products. For sure. Rather than making it more broad. For sure. And, you know, hey, that's how you become an expert in one field. And and that's also how you narrow down your your leads. Right. Like some people are out there looking for yes. a lot of leads. Right. Some people are out there looking for for all the leads. Right. I, I would be the first person to tell you, don't take in all the leads. Right. Let people self-select out of your process, because those are, that's going to just create a, a, a more seamless transition for the ones that are engaged, for the ones that are looking to to essentially take that next step forward, right? There, that's gonna help you be more effective, right? If you try to take in everything all at once, excuse me, you try to take in everything all at once, it, it's gonna make you a jack of all traits and a master of none, right? Uh, you wanna get good at getting good, right? So so stay in that, that focused channel, speak to that, ask questions to that, put your marketing to that, and all of a sudden the successes will start to fall out of one end and you won't have so much noise at the other end of the, of the you know, sales and marketing funnel, right? Next step is measure your results. What works? What doesn't? If it doesn't work, how can we update it? If we're not regularly reviewing the analytics and how things are performing, how can we expect to know what actually works? And if we're not testing different things, right? If we're not A-B testing inside of email or social media, how are we supposed to know that this stuff is working, right? How are we supposed to know that it's, it's building? Well, ultimately is are you reaching your goals? Right. Set your goals, set the KPIs, set things up so that you know what you're aiming for and, and now aim for that target. And as they say, aim small, miss small. Right. If you know, hey, this is our target. This is how we're going to get there. This is all the steps that we're going to take. We're measuring all of our successes. We're going to update things as we're going. You know, you really don't have much room for error. There's not a there's not going to be a, a, a situation where you're not going to know what's going on, right? You've you've measured for all of the success, right? You know what's going to work, what's not. And as it's happening, you can make those updates and make those tweaks. It's how it's supposed to work, <laughs> right? Um, you know, yeah. where, where people get caught up is, you know, buying and selling causes a lot of emotion, right? Uh, you know, and, and, and a lot of salespeople, they let the emotion get the better of them. And that's where they mess up. They don't remember that it's a numbers game. Right. Uh, you know, this is like uh, it's like uh, baseball. Right. Yeah. You might you might take a strike. You might take a, a ball. You might even get out a couple of times. But eventually you're going to hit a home run. 
Um, and, you know, the better you get, it's the fewer at bats that it takes to hit those home runs. You right, know, that's right. the that's the the name of the game. And that's where sales and marketing become blended. That's where, you know, uh, uh, effective communication, that's where uh, being a, a great company all, all comes in handy. Um, you know, as far as analytics go, though, I would tell you, don't don't overdo it here. Stay focused on doing the job, right? Stay focused on making sure that you're you're making the dials, you're reaching out to the people, you're saying the right things, you're asking the right questions and let the let the system continue to run. Um, you know, it's not necessarily set it and forget it. Like I said, you definitely want to make sure you're checking in, but you also got to do the work, right? Uh, you know, a Definitely. lot of people can get caught up in the analytics, right? Yeah. The, the numbers. I always call it paralysis analysis, Absolutely. right? Where you're, uh, oh, man. you get caught up in the numbers and, you know, uh, watching the scoreboard, right? Rather than getting back on defense, as they would say That's in right. football, right? That's right. Uh, <laughs> so just to keep it going here, again, you've done the work now. You've done the marketing. You've done the sales. You've gathered the feedback. Now it's just about repeating, right? That's exactly what I was just telling you guys. It's now about implementation. We have a, a, a saying here of above the line, right? Above the line. What, is, what does that mean? It means that you're going to take ownership, accountability, and responsibility, right? If you've put this process in place, it's on you to make sure that it works. It's not on the leads. It's not on the sales. It's not on the, the marketing. It's on you. It's on you to make sure that it's all working. It's on you to make the tweaks. It's on you to make the updates. Um, and if you do all that, you'll see success. It's not an if, it's a when. Uh, people need financing. Uh, there's something like 33 and a half million small businesses currently in the US and in 2023, over 70% of them ask for financing, right? So that's just some loose math over 25 million businesses. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of opportunity. <laughs> there's a lot of opportunity. Definitely. No shortage, that's for sure. No shortage. So how do you get there? You get there by joining Rock's affiliate platform. And what are some of the benefits of being an affiliate uh, or working with Rock? Few of them, just to name a few right here on the screen, are things like multiple points of contact, right? Multiple points of contact are going to allow you to leverage our team. Right. You can leverage your partnership advisor, our marketing division, uh, our, our sales team to help you sell more, market more, be more effective and ultimately understand how can you align with the products and services that we offer to increase conversions and ultimately make more money. Right. How do we do that? We do that with a stellar team. Right. Our reputation precedes us. Don't believe me. Just watch. Go take a look at uh, you know at, at some of the the reviews that are out there. We have thousands of five star reviews on uh, Google and Trustpilot and a bunch of other review sites where people are taking time to let us know that we've done a great job um, in ultimately getting them access to financing that's more expensive than their bank. Uh, <laughs> right? And why do I point it out like that? I point it out like that because you should know. Um, you know, the capital that we provide is typically uh, you know outside of what they could get at their local bank, um, you know, that does come at a premium. And to maintain such a, a stellar reputation while also offering expensive money, yeah. well, that that's almost like a, a catch-22, right? Where those two things shouldn't exist at the same time. It's like a double negative, right? Uh, we're not not the best. That's all that I'm trying to say. <laughs> uh, it's when, the service, right? Yeah, that's yeah, where, that, sure. that, that, how do you, how do you, how do you, get five star reviews while still you know putting people in 15 to, to 35 40 percent products you do it with great service yeah absolutely you, you do it by being full disclosure by being knowledgeable about your products by being able to to thoroughly and articulately explain the terms that's how you do it by picking up when they call by responding to emails in a timely fashion that's how you get good reviews for sure. service for sure. And, and how do we interact with our partners? Well, it all starts with our interactive partner portal. That's why it's interactive. Uh, and, and every affiliate gets access directly into our CRM, which gives you the ability to refer business, track all of your, uh, your current referrals, also track all your commissions, give you access to all of the marketing and branding uh, collateral that you could need, social media content, training videos that go into the different products. We give you access to, to documents that can help you collect information from your, your potential borrowers, things like debt schedules and applications and uh, you know um, different statements that you can have your borrowers fill out based on the different products and the requirements. 
So we're giving you pretty much the broker in a box uh, approach where you can uh, you can log in and, and do it yourself or you can leverage our team to help you do so. Right. Like that's that's really what we're here for. What I would say is it's up to you which process is going to make the most sense. But what you should know is when you refer over a business owner, the three things that we need are a business owner with their name, their number and that they have a need for financing. I can't stress this one enough where we'll have a, a new referral partner that'll think that, hey, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to go buy a list of, of business owners. And that's not a bad move. But what happens next determines how successful you're going to be with that, sure. that list of business owners. Sure. Right. So, hey, I'm going to go out and I'm going to buy this list of business owners. And then what I'm going to do is three at a time, I'm going to upload them into Rock System. And what we do is we reach out. Hey, we saw you were looking for financing. Uh, you know, Joe, our referral partner, referred you over. Never heard of Joe. No. Are you looking for financing? No. Do you own a business? No. <laughs> well, sorry, Joe, but your information that you bought is not great information. We also have established now that you bought this information. And now we have to work backwards. Because if Joe came to us and said, hey, guys, I bought this list of business owners. What we would say is, hey, Joe, send that list over to us. We're going to make sure that we put it through all the, the marketing channels to cleanse your data for you. Get active emails that are verified and approved that we can send email marketing to. We're going to email market to it on your behalf. And any leads that we generate and convert on, you're still going to get paid your revenue share. Right. But we can't establish that they have that need right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to utilize email marketing to see, hey, do you have a need? And if they engage, great, then we're going to we're going to move forward. But it's all about how you engage with us. It's all about how you share that information that determines what our next steps are. You could be a consultant that's super hands on. You're very involved in the business. You might even be like a CFO type for some of your customers, right, where you're helping prepare some of these financial documents um, and have direct access to a lot of this information. Well, then you'll be the main point of contact. We'll work directly through you. It doesn't it, either way works for us. Every Everywhere in between works for us. It does not matter how much or how little you want to be involved. You're able to just understand that, hey, I've made a referral to a great company and I can sit back and relax while they do the work and I, I earn the commission, right? Um, that's what it's all about. Uh, it's the ability to know that you've leveraged the right type of resource to help your small business owner clients get what they're looking for, right? And if you're not a partner yet, I invite you to scan this QR code and become a partner now. Our team is waiting. So what are you waiting for? No, <laughs> at the end of the day, I truly appreciate anybody that is new and is looking to rock out. I, I saw Chase, uh, Tracy dropped in the chat that rock rocks. Shout out to Tracy. She's been a partner for a long time. So definitely appreciate anybody here that is an active partner. If you're not actively partnered with rock and you want to know where to begin, scan here. You'll get access to uh, the team very quickly. Somebody will reach out, understand a little bit more about you, what you do, how you do it, and really allow you to uh, to get rocking as quickly as possible. Um, we definitely appreciate you guys rocking out. I do have a special announcement, but I need to know that you guys are with me. So in the chat, let me know that you're still with me because I do have the next slide is secret information that I don't know everybody Ooh, very knows. Nice. Oh, look, here we go. Here we go. Look at here this. we go. There it is. Now the chat's blowing up. Man. Here we go. Wow. I think it's the next slide. I hope it's the next slide. It's embarrassing. <laughs> it's embarrassing if it isn't. It's embarrassing. I got that slide. Yeah, yeah. No, it's definitely in here. It's definitely in here. That much I know. All right. Look, we got we got some rock stars in the chat. I love it. All right. So I want to invite you guys to rock. We are rocking out in person. I want you guys to come here. Um, it's going to cost you $100 to do so. That covers all of your food um, and some interactive stuff with us back and forth, uh, where you'll get a chance to come hang out in person and be at Rock Financial Headquarters here on Long Island. Um, the date is uh, November 7th and 8th for a fly-in Friday event. And what that means is we're going to put on a panel um, of it's, I believe it's like four or five, maybe even six speakers uh, across different products or different commercial financing products uh, where you can get a, a full mastermind on what it is uh, to be in the commercial finance industry and what the different products are and how they work, as well as um, free networking. You're going to get to meet other partners. 
we're targeting anywhere between 50 and 100 people to come in for this event. So um, you can meet partners from all over the world, from different backgrounds, uh, doing different things. So I, I invite you guys to come on in, uh, meet us, shake our hands, uh, get to know us a little bit better, get to know your points of contact in person. Uh, it would be really, really great to have you guys and uh, would love to, to know that um, you came from, from one of the webinars. That would be really, really cool uh, sure. if anybody was able to sign up from this. Anybody uh, anybody excited? Anybody gonna gonna look to to see if they can make this happen? Let me know in the chat if you're you're gonna uh, you know you're gonna try to see if you can swing it. Come rock out in person. For sure. uh, I love yeah, it. I love it. We got nice. a few yeses. I love it. I love it. You guys get me fired up. Come wow. rock out. Come rock out. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, if you're looking to get in contact right now. You can, obviously, you don't have to wait for November 7th and 8th. Uh, you can reach out to us. You can call us. You can email us. You can get us on the website. You can get at us on social media. Um, we're definitely excited to, to get a chance to interact with all of our partners, um, potential, new, existing, active, inactive. Give us a shout. Um, give us a shot. And, and if you haven't in the past and you're still wondering, join us for the event. Um, you know, nothing better than getting to know somebody in person. If you're trying to make a decision on whether to work with us or not, um, feel free to uh, to come rock out on Long Island in person, um, you know, at our, our office. You'll get a chance to meet the team, be in the office. We have like a separate uh, conference center in the in the building here where we'll do the uh, where we'll do the uh, the, the event. And uh, it, it'll be a really great thing. Otherwise, reach out to us now. And if you forgot and you were somebody that's like, oh, man, these guys are really cool. Now I want to partner with them. Uh, please, you can scan the QR code here. And I promise you, we will get to our Q&A um, in just a second as we uh, as we stop the share to our screen. Definitely stay tuned for more info on the October webinar. All right. Thank you guys so much for rocking out with us. Really appreciate, uh, you know, um, you guys hanging out and uh, and giving us your time. We know it's super duper valuable, but we hope you are able to pull some lessons and some some tricks of the trade uh, into your own sales and marketing. We'll continue to rock out. Um, you guys continue to be rock stars and let's work together. We love it. And, uh, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.